Hey everyone, received a question over the last few days and it was about food sensitivity testing. It was about a particular lab, I'm not gonna name the lab, but you'll understand the concept and I'll just refer to that lab as lab number one. So this particular question was, is this accurate? Um, what am I dealing with? Um, what should I look for? And what you have to understand about the food sensitivity test is that with this particular lab, they're only looking at IgA when they're testing these 96 foods. Now, sometimes with this lab, they may not test positive for eggs, for example, but if you run an IgG, then they'll test positive for eggs with another lab. The problem is most of the labs, they either one, uh, run lab number one, which is IgA, or they run lab number two, which is IgG. What I like to do in my practice is I like to run both IgA and IgG because oftentimes I will get someone that has a food sensitivity run on them a month ago and they said, you know, I don't really have much. Eggs are fine, gluten's fine, dairy's fine. And they may come with an IgG test. I say, hey, look, I don't know if you're not reacting in regards to the IgA. And oftentimes we run both panels. So we run IgA and IgG and they were negative on IgG, but they're positive for IgA on gluten, dairy, and eggs, and let's say almonds. Um, and so oftentimes that was kind of the missing piece for them. So if you're gonna have the food sensitivity test, it's worth it to pay the money. Um, if you only want one part of the, the lab or just IgA, you're only getting partial results. So in the long term, to be accurate, you want to get a lab that will look at IgA as well as IgG. That way you'll get a very good result. And then you can apply that to your situation to help you with your gut issues or sinus issues or skin breakouts, whatever the symptoms may be. So I hope I answered your question about food sensitivities. Until next time, eat well to feel well.